Hey everyone, this is Rock from StageAndSky.com, and today I really need to talk about King Saul. All right, so this is for my Christian followers, those who claim to be Christians, and those who are struggling to understand the Bible or um, to understand what God wants for us in this world. Okay, so the reason why I'm doing this is because um, when you read the Bible every night, you derive lessons that you can apply to your own life, right? And today, one of the biggest lessons I think a lot of Christians need to remember is you know when it comes to having faith and patience in god very often we want things and we want things to happen right away and if it doesn't happen in a lot of time we didn't we tend to give up on our faith or we tend to make rash decisions okay so when it comes to king saul um just a little bit of background he, for those who don't know king saul was israel's first king and as great as that might sound it's kind of sad because before king saul they had judges and ultimately God was Israel's king. They rejected God as king and they wanted an earthly king um, to basically fight the battles for them. And is uh, I think even, even there it boils down to a lack of faith um, because, you know, God's not doing things on their term. And I think the reason why, and this is a human condition too, it's the same with um, Rock. I don't want to know what the Bible says about something. I want to know what you say. The reason why a lot of humans do this is because with you as a human, knowing you're imperfect, there's room, there's wiggle room to argue. There's wiggle room for debate. There's wiggle room to judge your character and your decisions. However, if God is your king and God is giving you destruction, or even as a Christian, you direct them straight to the scriptures. Like, well, here's what the Bible says. No, I don't want to hear that. Of course you don't. Because then you'd be arguing with God. And you don't want that responsibility of saying, hey, God, you're wrong. Now, the reason why I, I have a great deal of compassion for Saul, I think... He, he does a lot of stupid things in the Bible. It's when, I literally thought to myself, this is the first time in my life I ever thought to myself, pity the fool. Like, I, I get it. When you think of King Saul, he, he did make a lot of foolish mistakes when it comes to God and lead, leading Israel. But at the same time, I can't help but have pity on him because of the enormous pressure that he faced. Like, when you read the scriptures, this is all in 1 Samuel, you know, you could tell that Saul wants to do what's good in God's eyes. He wants to lead the people. He wants to be a good king, but he's human, you know, and the amount of pressure he faced, like as foolish, I mean, we have the benefit here and now to have the entire Bible. So we know a bigger or more, com not a complete picture. There are some mysteries that are known to us, but we have greater knowledge of God. Whereas back then, you know, where you didn't have Jesus Christ or the New Testament, or, you know, Elijah, not, yeah, Elijah or other prophets that come after him. It was just, you know, the, the, the first five books of the Bible written by Moses, you know, those commandments and then the prophets that God gave him. So Saul was leaning a lot on his human understanding based on the, and the pressure he faced. Back then, the Israelites, their main enemy was the Philistines. And these weren't, you know, pushovers. You know, their army was vast. They had soldiers like Goliath who was over nine feet tall, you know, just slaying dudes left and right. It's like, when you see that, it makes sense that your heart would tremble if you don't have faith in God. And that's not to say that if you don't have faith in God, then you're, you're weak. I, ladies and gentlemen, we're all human. God's love, God's blessings, they are conditional. A lot of people don't think that. They think that, oh, I believe in Jesus Christ. I wear the cross. So, you know, I'm saved. It's conditional. The word if appears throughout the whole Bible, New Testament and told, Old Testament. If you obey my commandments, if you do this, you will have God's blessing. You will have God's, you know, he will be on your side. And the problem with King Saul is that he failed to follow God's commandments. The first thing he did was when he was faced with, you know, the Philistine army, and he was supposed to wait seven days for King, for Samuel, the prophet, to come and make the sacrificial blessings or the burnt offerings. And he waited seven days. Samuel didn't show up. So he sees the people scattering. You're the king of Israel. You got this army on the other side of the banks. It's like, okay, well, I'm supposed to wait. That's what the commands. But he's not here so apparently you know what are you gonna do as a leader now <laughs> brief segue uh into because last night i i wrote an essay about um you know you know what i would do for like rock what are you prepared to do to find your wife or to get a wife or a christian wife and i said be patient that answer be patient it's not applicable for everybody. Everyone's situation is different. For me, in my situation, in my life, be patient is different. You know, it, it, it's more for me. What I'm trying to say is that I have had other opportunities to abandon my faith or to go after a woman who wasn't Christian just to say that, hey, okay, I have a wife or, you know, I finally can have children, you know. 
Saul, if Saul had patience, he would have saved himself and Israel a great deal of hardship. He didn't wait for Samuel to come on the seventh day, so he went ahead and made the burnt offerings. And then when he did, you know, Samuel arrived, like, so now I'm thinking, why'd you do this? You know, Saul caved under pressure. Oh my God, you know, like, I was, the people were scattering. I had to do something. Because, and Samuel said, because you did this, God's going to take the kingdom from you and give it to your neighbor, which was ultimately King David, okay? That's as sad as that is, you know, King Saul is still King Saul. So did it end there? No. I would like to think that maybe God gave him another chance, another opportunity to redeem himself. So God gave him the commandments to kill and wipe up the Amalekites. This is essentially genocide. It sounds bad. A lot of people, agnostic atheists, they like to say, see, God's commissioning genocide. Well, if you understand why God wanted to wipe out the Amalekites, it's because Amalekites tortured and prosecuted his people when they were coming out of Egypt. You know, like he, uh, this is out of love, you know, like you saw your people being tortured and harassed uh, as they're coming out of Egypt, you know, after 400 years of slavery and bondage, you know, God, out of love, <laughs> God's justice, he said, hey, the Malachites, I will wipe them off the face of the earth. This is an exodus that he says this. So he tries to use King Saul to do this. And he says, hey, put every man, woman, animal, everything to destruction. King Saul doesn't do that. And at first, when I read it years ago, I thought that it was because King Saul was leaning upon his own human understanding and compassion. Oh, well, genocide is bad, and I don't want to, you know, kill everyone. That's horrible, you know? So part of me felt bad for King Saul, but then when I read this in my third time reading the scriptures, you know, all the way through, he doesn't kill the king, and he doesn't kill some of the, the spoils, you know? But he does kill man, women, child. So there, where, where's the human compassion there? And then, you know, you read later that when he was confronted, confronting the, the priest of Nob, that's N-O-B, you know, because they basically sheltered and gave bread to King David, he slaughtered all of them, you know, so it's like, where is compassion? No, what King Saul was doing was just very, very selfish and greedy, all right? He didn't kill the king of the Malachites, he didn't destroy all of the choice, the spoils, like he was supposed to, and then when when Samuel approached him, he said, why'd you do this? You know, you're supposed to obey God's commands. He tried to say, okay, well, the reason why we didn't do this is because we wanted to, you know, save the spoil so we can offer it to sacrifice to God, you know, like uh, tactic, right? Good tactic. And then Samuel says something that all of us need to remember, whether you're Christian, Jewish, anyone who believes in the God who created the heavens and the earth, we all need to remember this. Says, Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice and to listen than the fat of rams. Once again, to obey is better than sacrifice. What does that mean for us in, in, in today's modern world? We don't have burnt sacrifices. Christians, we don't, you know, slaughter lambs. We don't do any of that. But how we live our life, our demonstration is basically that. You know, like you can say all day, oh, well, God's in my heart and we do this and I'm doing this. But are you obeying his commandments? Are you living by Christ's standards? I know that's a very, very horrible thing to even consider because everyone's different. I'm not saying that anyone listening to this video or listening to my voice is not. I'm not even doing this video with a single Christian in mind. These are just questions we need to ask ourselves. Are you obeying God's commandment? So last thing before I go, because I know I don't want to get, I can talk all day about this, but what really prompted this video was last night I was reading in the, uh, chapter... Last night I was reading in chapter 28, okay, so King Saul, his death is coming up and it's very near. And again, like King Saul, he's faced with enormous pressure and chapter 28, you know, like this is towards the end of his life. He, again, he's faced with the Philistine army. It's really outnumbering the Israelites and it, you know, and he, he, he needs God, you know, he needs un instructions. He's, he needs guidance. We all been there, right? Where you're faced with against the odds, you don't know what to do. You feels like you're alone. You need somebody to help you, you know. And once upon a time, that was Samuel, but Samuel's dead by this point, you know. And he used to have God, you know. He used to call upon God, and God would give him destruction. He would give him guidance. But because Saul was so rash and made all these stupid decisions, God turned his back on Saul. You remember the condition: if if you obey my blessings, if if you obey my commandments, if you obey my instructions, I will be with you. If you do not, if you do not, he will not be there with you. He, you know, like in the, when he, when Saul first became king, it says the Holy Spirit rushed upon him, you know, and you know, like that's courage. That's, that's inspiration. That's faith. You're strong, you know, but when that's not there, anxiety, 
you know, you're just human. You can have all the kings and titles and all the money and all the women and all the material thing, materialistic things in the world. But if you don't have God, if you don't have the spirit with you, it's pointless. You know, so I felt horrible for King Saul, you know, and in verse in chapter 28, you know, again, you know, like this is this is us. This is human being. So in King in chapter 28, when he called upon God, God wasn't there. He doesn't have a prophet like Samuel. So David, he's been persecuting. So David's over on the Philistine side. What does Saul do? This is a lesson for all of us humans living here in today's modern culture. You know, we want this. We want success. We want money. We want power. We want glory. We want to be seen and respected and loved by our peers, uh, the humans on earth. If you don't get that guidance, if you don't, what do you do? King Saul went to a medium. He wasn't getting the answer from God. He didn't have a prophet. So he went to medium. He went to basically a fortune teller back in that, those times, right? And this came after King Saul did do, you know, he tried to follow the commandments. He let out rolling sweeping indictments you know, edicts through his land that all mediums and spirit and fortune tellers and necromancers should be killed. In Leviticus, it says that they should be stoned. So he was following that commandment. But in chapter 28, when he wasn't getting God's guidance, he wasn't getting an answer from God, what did he do? He turned his back on those commandments and he did like a lot of us human beings do and just caved. He caved into the pressure. He needed guidance and he didn't get it, so he went to necromancer. So in chapter 28, there's a medium of Endor, it's a woman. And this is in Philistine territory. So he basically risks his life to go out into the territory to find this woman. And he says, hey, I need you to summon someone for me. This medium's like, hey, you know, King Saul, you know, they're putting, you know, like, I'm risking my life here. Is this a trap? You know, is this entrapment? And King Saul says, if you do this for me, I swear to, ironically, on, you know, by God, you will not die. I will not punish you. So this necromancer... And this is kind of weird, right? Because it sounds it sound so bad. This is why you read the Bible over and over again. Because the first two times I read the Bible, I glossed over this, you know? But he, she actually summoned the spirit of Samuel. How is she? I mean, does, is she a prophet? Does she have magical powers? Do necromancers actually exist? Do sorcerers and mages exist? What's going on? Well, from the study Bible, and I, th I thank God I have the study Bible um, basically what happened there here in chapter 28 when you know this this medium of Endor summons the spirit of Samuel back it wasn't a, a, you know an hallucination it wasn't an illusion God basically allowed this this vision to happen you know like our souls we all know well for those who are Christians we know that our souls are eternal you know our, our bodies are destroyed but our souls you know, God's going to judge us. We will be resurrected. We will be judged and held accountable for our sins. Saul, not Saul, but Samuel was dead. But God allowed this, the spirit to come back to him in the same form that Saul knew him. So he was an old man. In the scriptures, it says a God risen from the earth, but the God's lowercase. You know, this is where, you know, you often say, oh, see, there are gods. And he's like, it's lowercase. There's only one God. And when it refers to Jehovah, that's the English word for Yahweh, it's capitalized. There's only one God. But human beings... We get it, okay? So Samuel comes to King Saul and says, Hey, you've brought this upon yourself, essentially. You know, like, you should know that in the coming days, you're going to face your death. You will join me in death. You know? So Saul sees this. He's already broken as a man. He's already obliterated when it comes to his conscience and his guilt and anxieties and the pressures of being king. And he's supposed to lead these people. Now you get the answer from Saul not from Samuel, that, you know, you're going to die. You're going, this is going to happen. You know, like you already know that the kingdom is going to be given to your neighbor, David. So this is going to happen. After that happened, after he sees his vision, he basically falls down on the ground. He has no strength in him. And again, I can't help but pity the fool, man. It, when I talk about patience in this world, when I talk about it, because it really does take patience. Very often we want God to work on our terms. We want Jesus Christ to do what we want. We often use, like I see sometimes boxers will take the Bible into the ring, you know, and it's like, what are you doing, bro? You know, like, that's not how, <laughs> that's not how God works, you know? In the Bible, there are so many examples of men, like jo Joseph was in prison for three years for a false accusation, you know? Um, Moses spent 40 years in the wilderness, you know, after he was kicked out, or he was, you know, exiled from Egypt, you know, before God approached him. 
you know abraham was like in his like 99 something years old when he first had isaac you know and they wanted a, their own son for years like a whole lifetime what do i want rock what do, what do you want rock i want to get married i want my own family except that i from the reading of scriptures i know that I can't marry just anyone. I don't want to get divorced. I don't want to repeat the mistakes of people I've seen time and time again. So I have patience. You know, I use discernment. I am selective. People say, Rock, you know what your problem is? You're too selective. Yes. Scriptures aside, I always say this joke, but if 10 years down the line, I have my children with me and my dad, my, ch my son or daughter says, hey, hey, dad, were you selective when it comes to choosing a wife? How bad and insulting would it be to my wife? If I said, no, I wasn't selective at all. As if I just, no, I just gave, I just gave into it. We do need patience. It does take strength. I, when I pray every night for a beautiful wife, I pray, God, let your will be done first and foremost. And when it comes to the loneliness, because I do live by myself ever since I was 22, you know, it, it's not easy. I, I'm going to write, I'm going to publish an essay about validation and likes. I think I, because it, Validation and likes and support, you know, those are pats on the back of the human beings you get. You're like, okay, you're doing good. Just keep going. Sometimes we, you know, thrive on that to keep us driven and know that we're doing what's right. You know, just just keep going. But when you don't get that, and a lot of us don't get it, you know, a lot of us aren't blessed with family and friends. And when I say family and friends, all the, I mean, obviously I do have a big family, but everyone lives, they're living their own lives, right? So I can't depend on them to wake up in the morning, I wonder what Rock's doing, I bet he needs my help, no, they're not thinking about me, they got their own problems they're dealing with, you know, but some people do have that, that's just to say that a lot of people, if you have those friends and family, if you do have the validation, if you do have the likes and supports, very often, you, I won't say you take it for granted, but it makes sense why you would probably not understand how other people who lack that validation and support, you know, like, it's, I want to say it's a big, it's a, it's a big deal to us. So essentially, you know, I think everyone should just, you know, it takes strength and it takes, I, I think that everyone should pray for the strength and the discipline to have faith, you know, to keep your faith strong. Um, and when I read about King Saul, I, I really do feel sorry for him. I really do pity the fool. Um, I think he could have, I think his heart was in the right direction, but he caved into human pressure. And that's not something to say lightly. You know, when you're faced with certain death on the other side of the battlefield with a vast Philistine army, which of us would say, nope, gonna wait for God? You know, it's like, it, it's, it's not to excuse his behavior. It's not to condone it, but I understand it. And very often, a lot of my peers, they just don't understand, which is why I often struggle to, you know, refrain from calling people stupid. Because that's the easiest way to describe it. It's like you. There's a lot of things I'm stupid. There's a lot of things I don't understand in this world, or when it comes to people' reaction. That's why. That's why I used to watch Keeping Up with the Kardashians because I don't understand that behavior. I would never hang out with people like that. However, people like that do exist. So it, as an author, it, it's worth worthwhile for me to study that behavior same with the real housewives and vh1 and i don't watch regularly but when i'm in the gym i mean they're beautiful women so that's motivation but also just study their behavior it's like what are they even on instagram there are a lot of people who i think are beautiful and they I, you know I, i'm inspired by them but at the same time it's like you are a beautiful woman you're in your 20s how are you not married yet <laughs> and because when you do get married i'm gonna unfollow you because i don't believe in coveting another man's wife it doesn't make sense it's like what were you trying to say rock is there's contradiction there there's method to the madness all right the point is i'm never going to be friends with people who are worldly or wicked i could be friendly but because those people exist and i don't believe in just kind of, in order for me to help people i have to understand them you have to listen to them you know and so you know it pays for me to to read, to, you know, learn about the world. You know, when I post pictures on Instagram about, you know, just studying what's going on in the world, you know, like I, it, it does me good to understand what's going on. We'll see what's happening. Okay. I can keep talking. I'm rambling. Um, but yeah, I just had to get those thoughts down about King Saul. Um, feel free to leave a comment. What are your thoughts? Am I, is there something I'm overlooking? Is there something you wanted to add? Um, feel free to like, subscribe and my website is stage of the sky.com. And thanks for watching.